in ebony the strong win a lot of the time but sometimes it's those that make the strong weaker that end up winning and we're going to be taking a look at that in this video hi and welcome to red ebony i am akayasha you can call me aka and in this video we're going to be covering debuffs to put it simply debuffs are a means of cutting down the effectiveness of your opponent's stats now at this point you probably know a bit about debuffs but before we dive right in i've got a short quiz for you question one what is the most important stat to debuff in ebony question two what are the two most difficult stats to debuff in ebony think about these questions maybe put something down in the comments the answers will follow later on in the video okay let's carry on to basically explain how debuffs work let's take a look at a battle report here we have a battle report and what we do we go to the troop buff tab over here we click on that and then it gives us the buffs for the attacker and for the defender your buffs will be on the left hand side the enemy would be on the right hand side and if we move down a little bit we see the buffs for each of the stats for the attacker and for the defender and if we move a bit further down we see the debuffs for each of the stats for the attacker and for the defender so what debuffs do in essence is that they subtract from the value of the stats of your enemy and effectively cut down the strength of that enemy. So for example, if we take ground troop attack, the enemy's attack is 613% buff. The debuff I had is 292%. So the enemy's effective ground troop attack that will be applied will be 320%. That is a significant cut and that is why debuffs are so important. Now, the important thing to note about debuffs in Ebony is that irrespective of however high you get your debuff value, you can only cut an opponent's stats down to a maximum of half of their original value. At that point, it doesn't matter whether you have more debuffs available, you will only be able to cut half of the opponent's stats. So, taking the previous example of ground troop attack, my debuffs were not high enough to cut down the opponent's ground troop attack to the maximum. However, if we look at ranged troop attack, for example, you can see that my debuffs were high enough to cut the opponent's stats down to half of the original value. So, to do a quick recap, your debuffs get subtracted from the opponent's buffs, giving a reduced effective value, and you can only cut the opponent down to half of the original value of that stat that the opponent had. And that, in essence, is how debuffs work in Ebony. Now, when we're talking about how to get debuffs, there are two main avenues for you to get debuffs in Ebony. The first one is your general. The second one is your keep. And we're going to touch on both of those very quickly. When it comes to your general, there are several ways for you to get debuffs. The first one is the general's main skill. Now, not all generals in the game have this, but there are some generals that have debuffs built into their main skill. So, if we take a look at Himiko, for example, in her main skill, she buffs ranged troop attack and defense by 15%, but she also has a native debuff to enemy mounted troops attack of 25%. So depending on the general you have, the main skill could be one way to add debuffs to your game. The next thing is the gear that you have on your general. Some gear sets in the game have native debuff attributes built into them. Most notably, Akemenide gear. Let's take a look at the ring, for example. If we look at the basic attributes here, you have range troop defense, range troop attack, but you also have ground troop HP debuff and mounted troop HP debuff. These are built into the gear. In addition, for gear sets like Akemenide, you have the set attributes which have built-in debuffs to them as well. It is important to note that not all gear sets in the game have debuffs built into them. So 
if your aim is getting debuffs on your general, you need to pay attention to the attributes and the gear pieces that will give you those debuffs. The next way you can get debuffs from your general is from the dragon or the spirit beast that you have on the general. Taking a look at Norway Ridge over here, you can see the dragon's special skill has ground troop HP debuff and mounted troop HP debuff built into it. That comes specific to this dragon. And note that not all dragons in the game have debuff skills like this. When it comes to spirit beasts, if you have Pegasus, for example, Pegasus comes with ground troop HP debuff native to the spirit beast. So if you have this on any of your generals, that debuff will apply when you're engaging in PvP. The next way that you can add debuffs to your general is with the Ascension feature. And of course, not all generals have this in the Ascension feature, so it's something that you should pay attention to. If we take a look at Andrew Jackson, for example, and you look at his special skill, you can see that by ascending Andrew Jackson, you get additional debuffs added. Finally, for some generals, the specialties that they have also provide debuffs. You can see that in Andrew Jackson's specialty, the second one has enemy troop attack debuff of 10% when you max it out. Again, this is select to some generals, so it's something to keep in mind as well. That pretty much covers all the ways that you can add debuffs with your general. Now, for some servers, they have the ability to get debuff skill books, which they can put on the general to add debuffs, but this is not yet widely available throughout the game, so we will not be covering those in any detail. Okay, the next main avenue for adding debuffs that we're going to look at is your keep. And in your keep, the main way that you get to add debuffs is by doing research. So if we go to the Research Academy and we move over to the Military Advanced tab, we scroll down a bit and we get to this section. Here, you have debuffs. You have debuffs for enemy ground troop attack, enemy mounted troop attack, enemy range troop attack, and enemy siege machine attack. If you scroll further down in this tab, you get more options to add debuffs for various stats in the game. Next, we're going to look at what we're going to call keep debuffs. And these are debuffs that you get from various sections in your keep. For example, in the art hall, when you go to the art treasure, activating some of these treasures will give you debuffs to your game. In addition, if we go over to the civilization treasures, these also provide buffs and debuffs for certain troop stats to your game as well. In your keep, another way to add debuffs is with your duty officers. Some of your duty officers will come with built-in debuffs for your game. Most notably, we have the Archer Tower duty officer, Mr. Ban Chao. If we look at Ban Chao's skill, he has a built-in debuff of mounted troop attack for 20% in his native skill. And this is applied when you put him as the duty officer for the Archer Tower. There are some duty officers in the game that come with built-in buffs and debuffs like this. And... With the inclusion of the Ascension feature for some of the duty officers, these stats, buffs, and debuffs that you can get by ascending the generals are also something that you should keep in mind as well. The next thing that we're going to look at in the keep are keep decorations. Now, there are some decorations in the game that when you have them, provide debuffs with the decorations that you get. So, if we take a look, at this keep decoration, for example, you get enemy troop defense debuff of 5%. And of course, you need to actually own these decorations for you to get the debuffs that they offer. Finally, when it comes to your keep, you also have the option of getting debuffs from your subsidies. And this is definitely one of the most important ways for you to get debuffs to your game. If we take a look at the subsidies, you have the option of adding mares to your subsidies, and these mares come with special skills that have native debuffs in them. In addition, 
you can also put gear on your subsidy general and that would also add to the debuffs provided by the native skill of that general. So that is a quick tour of the various ways that you can add debuffs to your game. It is important to note that with debuffs that come from your general, these are what we're going to call isolated debuffs. And that is because the debuffs will only be applied when that general is actually being used in either attacking or defending. The debuffs in your keep are what we're going to call universal debuffs. And that is because these will be applied in all situations every time you are engaging in PvP, irrespective of whichever general that you're using. And then finally, in its own separate category, debuffs from your subsidy are what we're going to call conditional debuffs. And these will only apply in two situations. The first one is when your subsidies are linked. So when they are linked either during defense or when they are included in the attack during offense. The second condition is that the subsidies need to be active. And by active, they need to have a subsidy mayor and they need to have troops in there. At least one troop needs to be present in the subsidy for the debuffs in that subsidy to be applied. If either of these conditions are not met, the debuffs from those subsidies will not be applied. Now, we'll go back to the quiz that we had at the beginning of this video. Question one was, what is the most important stat to debuff in Ebony? And the answer to that is ranged troop attack. From early stages in the game, even to later and more advanced stages, ranged troops are a very significant troop type when it comes to attacking. So when you're looking at cutting down your opponent's strength, it is very important for you to debuff ranged troop attack. Okay, let's carry on. Now, when it comes to strategies for increasing your debuffs, it's actually quite simple. You have two main options. The first option is working on debuff research in your academy. And the second option is working on debuffs from your subsidies. When it comes to research debuffs, as we mentioned earlier, these are universal debuffs that will be applied in all situations. So they're actually very handy to have. However, they are limited by the amount of research that you can actually do in your academy. And depending on the stage you are at, this will be restricted by your academy's level, the amount of gold that you have, and the amount of research stones that you have available to complete the debuff research. Completing the debuff research in the academy is very expensive. It's a long game effort. When it comes to your subsidies, as we said, these are conditional debuffs and there are two stages to the strategy of increasing your debuffs with your subsidy. The first one is picking your subsidy mares. Being careful to pick good generals that have native debuff skills that will serve as mares in your subsidies is very important. The second stage of increasing your debuffs when it comes to your subsidy is the gear that you put on your mares in the subsidy. Predominantly, you would want Akamenide gear because Akamenide gear is the main gear set that has a lot of native debuffs built into it. You would want to dress up your subordinate city mayor in Akamenide gear. The restriction to that, however, is that Akamenide gear can only be crafted once you have upgraded your forge to level 33 and you have Akamenide scrolls and enough materials to do the crafting. So, for most people, decking out your subordinate city mares in full Akamenide is also a long-term effort. Now, as an extra tip, there is one more thing that you can do when it comes to subsidies to increase the amount of debuffs that you have. And that is simply to get more subsidies. The prestige rank that you have will determine the amount of subsidies that you can hold. So, if you put effort in increasing your rank to the maximum of Archduke, you can get additional slots for subsidies. 
every additional subsidy that you add up to the maximum of nine means another space for another subordinate city mayor and another set of debuff gear that can go on that mayor. That can be extremely valuable when you are trying your best to increase the debuffs that you have in the game. Now that we've covered that, going back to the quiz question that we had, the second question, what are the two most difficult stats to debuff in Ebony? The answers to that are ground troop attack and siege machine HP. And as you progress further in the game, your ability to debuff these two stats could prove invaluable for your performance during PvP. So, if you like the content in this video, be sure to give it a like. If you have any questions or comments regarding some of the things that we've touched on, please feel free to drop a comment down below. Thank you, and Aka signing out.